from Fredonia State University. This is the Rock and Hockey Show. That was my fly. This is hockey, the way it should be. Welcome to the Rock and Hockey Show. This is the Rock and Hockey Show. This is Bio Hockey, and you're watching The Rock and Hockey Show. This is The Rock and Hockey Show! This is The Rock and Hockey Show! Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to The Rock and Hockey Show, and now a guy who's still waiting for his college acceptance letter, Coach Dave Mansfield. Welcome hockey and rock and roll fans from around the globe. This is The Rock and Hockey Show. <laughs> So he sailed like a rock He sailed like a hawk See, he tail all the way to the back of the cane, oh yeah! Hey, this is your first time watching. This is the show where the hockey rocks and the music kicks. Yep, we got great hockey content, we got great interviews, we got great skill development, and we got kick rock and roll music to back it up. All right, if you know me, you know I love music. So what I did is I took music and I took hockey and slammed them together, and that's what the Rock and Hockey Show is all about. If you love the show, make sure you subscribe. Catch up on all the up and coming events. Speaking of events, we have something new to announce, and yes, RJ Average Joe had, did have one good idea uh, of all of his ideas. One was actually good. He's been bugging me for probably almost a year and a half now to start a podcast. So coming soon, the Rock and Hockey Show podcast. It's going to have the same great hockey content, same great interviews, but now you can listen to us on the go, on the move, in your car, while you're cutting the lawn, while you're at school, supposed to be paying attention, while you're working out, even while you're sitting on the toilet, you can catch a Rock and Hockey Show podcast. All right, before we go any further, I want to thank our last guest, Ernie Clement, right here in a Rock and Hockey layer. Ernie plays for the Cleveland Guardians Major League Baseball, and he had a great conversation with us about being a three-sport athlete. Make sure you check that out. All right, and yes, I am rocking my Tigers hat here, and I believe the Tigers did beat the Guardians the other day, but we love Ernie nevertheless. Hope to get him back on the show real soon. All right, we have a great show for you today. We took our show on the road to my alma mater, Fredoni State University, and we caught a game there, and we sat down with longtime coach Jeff Meredith of Fredoni State. Uh, Jeff was actually my coach when I played there for two years. He was early in his career, and he's still there rocking it, so hats off to Jeff for a long time. A uh, uh, very successful career. We sat down with Jeff Wright in the Fredonia State locker room and talked about his experiences, all the years he's been there, his ups and downs, uh, his bucket list of what he hopes to accomplish, uh, yet still in his career, and some great um, perspective on how his longtime career has really molded him into the coach that he is today in order to deal with today's game and today's players. So, great interview with Coach Meredith from Fredonia State Hockey. We did get to watch a Friday night game, and I was hoping Coach would ask me to suit up for a Saturday night game because I still think I have like 15 minutes left of eligibility left to play college hockey, but he didn't. Anyway, we got a great on ice skill development session today filmed right on the outdoor rink here in the Rock and Hockey Lair on acceleration and quick starts. Like usual, we got all kinds of nonsense happening. Before we go any further, say hi to the band. Again, don't forget to elbow that subscribe button. All right, let's get this show rocking. This is the show where the hockey rocks. And the music sucks. All right, let's get this show rocking. Hey hockey and rock and roll fans, I want to take just a second to welcome Trotta to the Rock and Hockey family. Check out the newly renovated Trotta 2.0 right off of 490 at Cobbs Hill at the new Culver Road Armory. TrottaRochester.com Two outdoor dining areas including a massive upstairs patio with a full bar. Man, you got to check out their 100 square foot 
TV wall above the main bar and an additional eight large screen TVs throughout. So make sure you partake in the self-serve beer wall with over 50 beer and wine selections. Today's interview brought to you by Trotta. Check them out at trottarochester.com. Special interview today. We are at Fredoni State University with my former coach Jeff Meredith. Jeff, how are you? Thanks, Dave. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, excited to be here. Now, Jeff, I was doing a little homework for uh, the show here, and I was never good at math, but I was looking at your record or your stats. Forty years, is that correct? Uh, coaching in college, 30, 34, I forgot. But, but coaching forty years—that's a lot of hockey. Yeah, it is. I. It, I always tell people it beats working for a living. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you still having fun with it? I am. I am. And that's the only way I, I would still be doing it. Um, you know, I there, there's a lot of aspects I actually enjoy more now than ever. I'm sure, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, you know, just being with the guys. And um, I was fortunate to have a college coach that was really instrumental in helping me get to the next place in life. And um, that's that's the fun part of this for me. And I, I just like being around the guys. Hey, we're going to take a quick break from the interview to check out these rock and hockey highlights. Thanks to our friends at Piranis Hockey World and Holly's Hockey Tape. This first one's a doozy, and it puts the rock'em sock'em in the term rock'em sock'em. This is Ethan Morowski with a big hit in the championship game. <laughs> nice hit, Ethan. Keep on rocking. Now, three Suniac championships. I'm sorry. Yes, three Suniac championships. Three Suniac Coach of the Year, uh, NCAA Division Three Coach of the Year, two Final Four appearances. Um, what's next on your bucket list as a coach? Uh, not to get to a hundred career ties <laughs> because I'm at about 96 right now, which just blows my mind. But no, the the next thing on my bucket list is, you know what I, uh, I really don't have anything. I, I want to provide an incredible experience for our student athletes. I want to uh, help them grow as young people and to have alumni that are still connected after all these years, yeah. uh, that makes me most proud right. and that's something that I, I'm very, very proud of. Maybe a uh, NCAA championship? Oh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> you wouldn't go home and kick the dog. <laughs> now you've managed to, watching the game last night, we got to watch a game and, and I don't think I saw you lose your cool once. You know what? I think I like myself coaching at 63 a lot better than <laughs> 33 because I was pretty high strung, as you remember. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, and especially coming off a year where we didn't have hockey and yeah. the pandemic, you get a lot of time to think. And, you know, maybe you don't sweat the small stuff as much anymore. <laughs> you and I had a conversation not too long ago. Um, after a, a rough practice with the team, and you said, you know what, Davey would be happy I didn't lose my cool <laughs> when the guys did something, and, and I just had to laugh because, you know, back when uh, you were, uh, I think when I first came here, it was your second year at Fredonia, and, um, you know, and emotion was good, and and sometimes emotion got the best of, of you and the best of us, and uh, um, I had to laugh back at some of those uh, past experiences. No, I, you know what, I, I think I, develop more tools in my toolbox because when you were here I think the only thing I had was a hammer <laughs> I don't don't reach for the hammer first anymore we're gonna take another quick break check out this snippety doo da on the fly by Alex Saracene top shelf elevator to the penthouse baby <laughs> Keep rocking. Now you've seen, of all your years here at Fredonia, you've seen a lot of players come and go. Anything different now from today's players in, in 2021 uh, as opposed to, you know, back in my era of, I don't even remember what year it was, 1990? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing, and I, I, don't, I don't say it's better or it's worse, but the biggest thing is, you know, in the old days when you were here and I was just starting out, it was, the coach was up on the mountain. 
up and top and sent down the decree to the players and the players went, like, yeah, you know, and, and these days it doesn't work like that. You, you need to spend a little bit more time explaining. Every drill that we do in practice, when we go through it before practice, I tell them why we're doing this drill today. <laughs> You know, just to give them context of, of what we're trying to accomplish. And I, I don't think it's better or worse than it used to be. It's just really different. And, uh, you know, I don't mind it. I, I kind of enjoy it. And I think you just have to maybe communicate a lot more than the old days. I know when I first started coaching, I'm not at 40 years, but uh, it's been a long time. But I know that one of my sayings was because I said so. That's why we're doing this. And uh, I can't really say that as much anymore. No, no, that, that's not in the toolbox. <laughs> now, you, your boys uh, uh, have grown up and they're playing, uh, one still playing college hockey. Youth hockey players today, similar question to what we just talked about, but do you see any difference in them other than, you know, than what, what it was back in the day when, when your boys first started playing and when you first started coaching? Well, there's so many more opportunities for skills, you know, skills for guys. I mean, you know, I mean, when... It, I remember after you graduated, you would tell me you'd go to the rink in, uh, was it Victor? Yeah. And and you would take a kid aside and work in the corner on edges. Yep, yep. And that's how you started your business. And During open skate. Yeah, yeah, during <laughs> open skate, absolutely. And now, I mean, there's so many skill opportunities for guys. And you find guys are so skilled. It's interesting, though, because sometimes there's, there's a little disconnect between the skills and the hockey sense. Right. And I think that's something that everybody in hockey, we're going to have to figure that out at some point because we have some kids that are incredibly skilled, but the sense of playing the game isn't at the same level as their skill level. One thing, uh, you know, I, as I <clears throat> watching the game last night and I try to instill on, on my boys and my teams that I coach is just the the camaraderie in the locker room, how great it is, and something that that's what you're going to remember is you're not going to remember, you might remember some goals or you'll definitely remember championships, but you're going to remember those teams, and it doesn't happen every year, as you know, but the teams that everybody just gets along and you can't wait to get to the locker room and hang out with the guys <clears throat> because some teams are more special than others because of the way they get along, and that's something that you probably you see this with you when, when the alumni come back and they remember those teams that were it was such a great memory and that's what they're going to take with them um, away from hockey. Well, no, I, I agree because you know, and, and you hear me say this that at the end of the day, you know, we'll win some, we'll lose some, but it's the relationships that we have. Those are the things that are going to last us long after the game is over. And I think the locker room is a special place, and that's where those relationships grow and. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, I just heard from a group of guys. I mean, you know, you know the guys, Dempsey and Pulowski and Urban and Gould and all those guys. Like, they were just in our game last weekend, yeah. you know. And, and 30 years later, I mean, Jeff Haynes. I cut Jeff Haynes and threw him off the team. And yet we talk on his birthday. Yeah. I wrote him a letter the other day. He's in, in the 11-day power play coming up that Mike Lezikowski runs. And... I just wished him good luck. So, like, those those relationships are really, really special. Our last highlight's going to feature two great saves by Connor McCray in a shootout, not only to win the game, but to win the championship. Great job, Connor. Congratulations to the 15U and 18U AAA teams on winning your championship. Appreciate you taking the time. I know you got to prepare for a game. We're off to, to play a game as well, and, and thanks for coming on the Rock and Hockey Show. Hey, it, it's been great, and I appreciate no pie in the face today. <laughs> I forgot to pack the pie. I wish I would have. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching the Rock and Hockey Show here at Fredoni State University. <laughs>
My mom asked me to get six cans of spray from the store the other night, right? I got seven up instead. Hey, what's up, Rockers and Hawkers? Thanks for stopping at the office. This is the Rock and Hockey Show. I'm Dave, and I got my trusty sidekick, Miles, here. Miles is, how old are you, Miles? 11. 11. Miles is 11, wearing his game MVP hat. All right. Hey, you see I'm rocking my Auburn Maroon hat, so I want to give a shout out to all my Auburn Maroon friends out there. Hey, today we're going to do a couple acceleration exercises, which are great for pretty much any level of player, even for younger players that are still working on their crossovers. But we're going to do some simple exercises, working on your acceleration, how to gain speed, and then we're going to do it with puck. And Miles is going to do it all. Thanks for watching, Rock and Hockey. Okay, Miles is going to work on some quick starts here. And for his acceleration, you see we got a little piece of 2 by 4 there. He's going to jump over that. And what that is, that's just an exercise for your first step acceleration, okay, explosion. So he's going to jump over that and make a really nice soft landing. Then he's going to quick start, tight turn, and then cross over to gain speed coming out of his turn. All right, here we go. Notice how Miles makes a soft landing and uses quick steps to accelerate. This is just an exercise, but notice a good soft landing from your jump will help you be more prepared to make an explosive quick start. On the turn, lead with your stick, carry as much momentum through as you can, and then get those feet going. Similar to his quick start, Miles uses quick feet crossovers to gain speed. Just remember to generate speed, first you need to generate power. What type of drink is my favorite drink to drink in the desert? Water is here a mist.
Where do quilters play tennis? At the Thimbleton. Hey, you should check out Trotta. I did. This is a Rocky Rocky show. What religion are cats? Uh, he got that one. Nice. He got that one. Good. Oh, I think I lost it. Got you.